Okay, so this is week 59 of our weekly discussions. Uh, and I'm JD, if you don't know me yet. Um, for those of us who just joined, uh, well, uh, what, what is effective altruism? Effective altruism, as a recap, is just an idea and it's a community. And it's focused around using evidence and careful reasoning to figure out the very best ways to improve the world and then to act on that basis. We are the Christian group. And we're a global community of Christians who think EA is a really good tool to help us better and love serve, better love and serve others uh, as Jesus asks us to. So we want to inspire and equip others to do likewise. And our topic for today, I kind of skipped over it, is uh, Christians should give to secular charities. And this is an argument that I'm making for the next uh, eight to 10 minutes. And uh, I'll raise some objections to the argument at the end. But um, I want to dive into that. So as a roadmap, I want to start out with definitions and clarification. And then I want to lay out three points. Uh, the first is that God cares about poverty and health for their own sakes. Uh, the second is that secular charities are among the most effective at alleviating poverty and poor health. Uh, and finally, that God is glorified when you give to effective secular charities, uh, contrary to, to what some might, might say. And this might be a little bit hand wavy. Uh, I would encourage you to uh, go into the depths of the research that I'm going to mention or allude to, uh, but for time constraints, I can't go super deep into these right now. So just starting out with some definitions, I, I wanna define what I mean by a secular charity. And here I'm drawing on uh, Alex Ratti's article where he, where he argues in, in our community blog uh, about about this, uh, and he defines what a Christian charity is. So I'm going to define what a secular charity is by by negating what a Christian charity is. So a secular charity is a charity that doesn't one verbally communicate the gospel to its beneficiaries, the people it helps. Uh, it it does not organize Christian practices like prayer and worship. It doesn't have any references to Christian goals in its external messaging, uh, and by Christian goal, yeah, references to to Christian goals and might reference. Um, things Christians care about, but not in a not using Christ or or Christian or gospel uh, in its in its explicit messaging. A secular charity does not have a leadership team or a staff of committed Christians, and it does not have a broadly Christian uh, ethos. So to clarify the claim I'm going to make, uh, I don't mean that every Christian should only donate to secular charities. Uh, I do mean, though, that there's a strong case that faithful stewardship often involves giving substantially to secular charities uh, and even possibly more than to Christian charities or to a local church. And so the first point I want to make is that God cares about poverty and health. And I want to argue that God cares about these things for their own sakes. And so the, the, the first place, of course, to look to for this is to scripture. Uh, and when we read throughout scripture, we see uh, examples all throughout of God's care for the poor and the lowly. Uh, we see God choosing Israel, not because Israel's strong, but because Israel is weak and lowly. And God wants to show his strength by helping the weak and the lowly. God looks at Israel and its suppression um, under slavery in Egypt, um, and he delivers them from that. Um, we read throughout scripture that God is near those who are low in heart and those who are poor in spirit. Uh, we also see God being near the, those who are materially poor as well um, and those who are sick. Um, and yeah, there are just countless examples of scripture of this. I want to mention just two verses related to God's command for mercy, uh, which I think is an extension of God's concern for the poor uh, and, and those low and, and sick. The first is um, in James 1, 27. I'm, I'm not going to put it up on the screen here, but I'll just quote it. Uh, James says, pure and genuine religion in the sight of God, the Father, means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Um, there's another verse, I think it's in Isaiah. Um, I'm quoting it kind of um, off the cuff here, but um, there's a, it goes something like, is this, um, what is the sacrifice that, that I desire? Is it burnt offerings? No, it's that you look after widows and orphans. Uh, and then we read also in Micah 6, 8, um, a summary of, of the law in the Old Testament uh, where, where God says, um, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you 
to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. So yeah, I want, I want the claim I'm making here is that God cares about um, those who are, um, God cares about people. God cares about our welfare and our flourishing. And, and, um, and when things get in the way of that, when evil and sin gets in the way of that, um, that's something that breaks God's heart and poverty and, and sickness are, are two powerful ways that, 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 that sin, uh, that sin harms human flourishing. So my second point is that secular charities are among the most effective at alleviating poverty and poor health. And uh, this is going to be a bit hand wavy, but throughout effective altruism, we have examples of research of the most effective uh, charities doing work in the health space, doing work in the poverty space, taking a neutral approach, looking at hundreds, looking at thousands of different charities based off of the evidence uh, and boiling it down to the very few standout charities that for every dollar donated have the most impact. Uh, and by and large, the, the top charity recommendations tend to be secular. Um, I, now, I, I don't believe that these charities are successful by virtue of being secular, but it just happens to be that um, their primary goal does not have um, an explicit Christian reference, uh, but these, these charities are extremely streamlined and, and, and effective at improving health um, and reducing poverty. So some examples, one would be just looking at uh, Give, Give Well, uh, in their, in their standout charities. Uh, I actually, uh, a few of these, like, especially the malaria net, uh, distributors, uh, these aren't explicitly Christian, uh, distributors, but, um, they do have Christians working in them. And some of their partners are Christian organizations, um, but they, they're not explicitly Christian. Um, another example of a secular charity, uh, yeah, like give directly. This is this is still, I would say, a secular charity. But it's it's Paul Niehaus, it's its founder, and it's um, I believe it's, it's president still is uh, is himself a practicing Christian. So you do see Christians working through secular charities to, to bring about this effectiveness. And so my third point is that God is glorified through giving to effective secular secular charities, um, and. Underlying this point is, is, the, um, is the idea that God does not require Christians to only give, um, to, to only give in Christ's name. Um, and actually, there are ways to give to effective secular charities in Christ's name, uh, even if that's something uh, that, that God does require. So we have examples in scripture of um, of of people who aren't Christian fulfilling God's purposes. I think of King Cyrus uh, uh, who, who, redeemed, who redeemed the Jews um, in the Old Testament. Um, I think of many other examples as well, but um, we know that God can move through worldly means to do good uh, and that we as Christians um, can be shrewd about the best ways to fulfill uh, God's, um, God's redeeming work in this world. Um, and some other points on this. Um, yes, I there there are there are many ways to give to effective secular charities and still give God glory for this. So one one is to um, is to is to give to our Christian campaign for effective charity, which is a a fund of. Um, which is a fund from many Christians who are giving around the world in Christ's name to give well charities. Uh, and they're giving in this way because they want to give Christ's glory, uh, but they don't want to sacrifice effectiveness. Um, but then I, I would just argue that throughout scripture, we don't, um, we don't, we don't think of, of, of Jesus's acts of mercy and of acts of healing um, as anything less if they're done in private. We know like in many examples in John, um, Jesus upholds this messianic secret of, of doing good deeds uh, and of healing, but without revealing that he is the son um, of man. Uh, maybe not in John, but in other scriptures, he does this. And I, I, I guess I'm not, I don't, I'm not convinced that, um, that God is only glorified if, um, if somebody's shouting loud and proud, this is, this is done in Jesus' name. But uh, that's something you can object to. I have a few objections here. I would love for, for you all to discuss. 
One objection is just that it's more satisfying to support Christians. Uh, many of us may feel this way. Uh, another objection is that maybe it's more satisfying to support our friends. Uh, and if we are Christians, I know many of us will have Christian friends. Uh, and there is something special about supporting friends. There's something very deeply personally satisfying. Uh, and I can, I, can, I can personally appreciate that. Um, another, another argument is that Christian giving improves the brand of Christianity, that if we always uh, give only to Christian charities or only in Christ's name, that we, we improve the way that people perceive Christ around the world. And uh, connected to this idea is that God only gets glory for work done explicitly in Christ's name. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, yeah. So I mentioned, I, I'm not convinced of this, but this is an objection that people, uh, that people have. And then uh, there's an objection that says that God cares less about where you give, sorry, typo here, where you give and more about your heart uh, and your heart's intent. And then finally, uh, if you do believe that evangelism is significantly more valuable than all other cause areas, then you would probably think that the best way to give the most effective charities are going to be Christian charities. I don't know of many secular charities doing evangelism work. Um, so if you, if you think that the evangelism is significantly more valuable and that this is highly likely, um, then you might want to give all to only evangelism charities and that would mean giving um, little to none to secular charities. So again, I'm not arguing um, that all these objections are are complete are completely baseless or false, um, but these are these are these are valid um, concerns that somebody could raise, and I hope we can discuss them right now uh, in breakout rooms. And um, and let's go ahead and and do that. So thanks for listening to me talk. I think a lot of the value from these is not even what I bring as a speaker, but it's. It's uh, what, what we all can talk about in, in, in smaller groups.